In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to name alkyl halides. So let's start with this example. How can we name this particular alkyl halide? Feel free to try it if you want to. Well, the first thing we need to do is count the longest chain. And we need to count it in such a way that the substituents will have a lower number. If we count it from left to right, the bromine atom will be on carbon 2. If we count it in the other direction, the bromine atom will be on carbon 4. And so we don't want that. Therefore, this is going to be called 2-bromo because the bromine atom is on carbon 2. And there are five carbon atoms in the longest chain. So that corresponds to pentane. So it's 2-bromo-pentane. Now let's try this example. Go ahead and name the following alkyl halide. So we need to count it from left to right. And so we have a six carbon chain, which corresponds to hexane. We have a chlorine at carbon two and three. So this is going to be two comma three dichlorohexane. We need to use the prefix di because we have two chlorine atoms. And we need to use a comma to separate the numbers and the hyphen to separate a number from a letter. So here's another one that you could try. So in this case, which way should we count? From left to right or right to left? Let's do it both ways. And let's see which way makes sense. So let's go from left to right first. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we need to write the substituents in alphabetical order. So bromo comes before chloro. So in this case, it's going to be 2-bromo dash 4-chloro and then pentane because there are five carbons. Now, if we count it in the other direction, it's going to be 4-bromo dash 2 dash chloro pentane. So which way is the correct way to name this? So in both cases, it's listed in alphabetical order. In such a situation, you want the first group to have the lower number. So you want to put the numbers in ascendant order after you alphabetize the substituents. So this here is the best answer. So this was the right way to number it. Let's work on another example. How can we name this particular compound? So we have an alkene and an alkyl halide. So which group should we give more priority to? The alkene or the alkyl halide? We need to make sure that the alkene has the lower number. So we need to count from left to right as opposed to right to left. So we have a fluorine atom on a carbon 5. And the alkene is between 1 and 2. And there's 6 carbons. So instead of saying hexane, it's going to be hexene. And the double bond is at carbon 1. We have to pick the lower number of those two numbers. So to put it all together, it's going to be 5 fluoro dash 1 dash hexene. And so that's how we can name this particular compound. Now what about this one? Let's say if we have an iodine atom on a cyclohexane ring, how can we name it? Now we don't have to worry about numbering it because it's automatically going to be on carbon 1. And so we don't have to say 1 iodo cyclohexane. This is simply iodo cyclohexane. Try this problem. So now that we have two substituents on this cyclopentane ring, 
since there's a total of five carbons, we do need to number the substituents. So which one should we make number one? Bromine or methyl? Well, B comes before M, so we're going to have to alphabetize it. And so we want this one to have the lower number. So I'm going to make this number one. Now, which direction should we count? Clockwise or counterclockwise? If we go counterclockwise, the methyl group will be on carbon four. If we go, let's say, clockwise, it will be on carbon three. And so we want the substituents to have the lowest numbers possible. Therefore, to put it together, it's going to be one bromo, and then three methyl, and we have a total of five carbon atoms in this ring, so it's going to be cyclopentane. Now here's the next example. This time we're going to have three substituents as opposed to two or one. Take a minute and work on this example. So we have a bromine, a chlorine, and a methyl. So how should we put it all together? Should we make the bromine atom carbon one? Even though B comes before C and M, let's see what's going to happen. That means the chlorine atom will be on carbon three and the methyl will be on carbon four. And so we're going to get the numbers 1, 3, 4. Now, if we make the chlorine atom number 1, we're going to have to go in this direction. And so the methyl will be on 2, bromine will be on 5. So that will be 1, 2, 5. And if we go in this direction, it's going to be very bad because the methyl will be on 6. So we're not going to consider that. But let's say if we put the 1 on methyl and we count in a direction that's closest to the other substituents. This will be 1, 2, and 4. So 1, 2, and 4 is less than 1, 3, and 4 because 2 is less than 3. It's also less than uh, 1, 2, 5 because 4 is less than 5. So this is the best way to count it because it gives us the lowest number for all the substituents. So we have a 4 bromo A chlorine on 2, so that's a 2 chloro, and a methyl on 1. And there's 6 carbons in this ring, so that's a, a cyclohexane ring. So let's put it all together. So we need to put it in alphabetical order. So it's going to be 4 bromo, and then 2 chloro, and then 1 methyl cyclohexane. And that's the answer. Consider this molecule, CH3Br. What is the common name and the systematic name for that molecule? The common name for CH3Br is methyl bromide, because we have a methyl group attached to the bromine atom. The systematic name, this is going to be methane, but it's simply just going to be bromo methane and that should be one word so let's look at another example try this one so the common name is going to be ethyl chloride and the systematic name is simply chloroethane. We don't have to say one chloroethane because if you put the chlorine atom on this carbon or on this carbon, it's still going to be carbon one. Now, what about this example? Try that. What is the common name for that molecule? The fluorine is attached to an isopropyl group. So this is going to be called isopropyl fluoride. Or the IUPAC name, it's 2 fluoro, because if you count it, the fluorine atom is on carbon 2. So it's 2 fluoro propane. 
Let's consider two last examples. Try those two. So starting with a common name, this is called propyl iodide. And for the IUPAC name, we could see that the iodine atom is on carbon one. So we could say it's one iodo propane. Now for the example below it, the chlorine atom is attached to a tert butyl group. So the common name is going to be tert butyl chloride. Now for the systematic name, I'm going to draw it like this so it's easier to see it. So this is going to be carbon 1, 2, and 3. So on carbon 2, we have a chloral group and a methyl group. So this is going to become, it's going to be called 2-chloro dash 2-methyl because we need to put it in alphabetical order and then propane since we have a 3-carbon parent chain. And so now you know how to name the alkyl halides using common names and IUPAC nomenclature.